Hi, welcome back to Math 111. We are going to talk today about section 5.2, which is all about inverse functions. Um, believe it or not, you already kind of understand a little bit about inverse functions, and that should be clear as we move through this lecture. Inverse functions are pairs of functions. So one function is an inverse of another function if the one function undoes the action of the first function. So an example of that is think about this pair we've got right here. So let's say f is a function that takes whatever value we give it, it multiplies that value by 3 and then subtracts 4. The reverse of that would be to take the value subtract 4 and divide by 3. If we did that, we would get back to what we started with. Right? That's what inverses do. We take a value, x, we put it through whatever process f says to put it through, and that gives us a value that is y equals f of x, the output from f. If we want to undo that, we use the inverse function. And we use the output from f as the input into our inverse function that we're calling g here. And we get back what we started with. And this is the test to see if two functions are the inverses of one another. If we take, if we compose together two functions, g and f, and if we compose them together and we get x, and then if we compose them together in the other direction, the other way, so f of g, and we get back x, that means these two functions are inverses of one another, and the functions are said to be invertible. Now, not every function will have an inverse who is, that is a function, and we'll look at some examples of that. But let's do that. Let's talk about what inverses are when we graph them. So we've got two functions here graphed. And these two functions are inverses of one another. Notice that I've got a dashed line in here. So this dashed line in the middle, don't be confused by that. This guy is not part of the graph of the function or its inverse. This is just a mirror. It's a line of symmetry. Think of it as a mirror that's been laid across, stood across the coordinate axis. The reason it's there is because these two functions that are inverses of one another are mirror images across this line, which is the line y equals x. So one way of understanding this is to realize that if there is a point x, y, in this case, 1, negative 1, on the graph of g. And if f is the inverse of g, then the point y, x, well, that's a weird way of putting it, but x's and y's swap places. So the point negative 1, 1 is on f. These two functions are mirror images. So one way to get from a graph of g to a graph of y is to take every point on the graph of g, reverse its coordinates, so put x for y is y where x is, and, that, and graph those points. That will give you a graph of the, function, the inverse function. The way we denote, we have to have a way to write this because math is an written language, we use a little inverse, a little um, negative one superscript to read inverse. So f to the negative one power, this does not say f to the negative one, this says f inverse. So if we're looking at the graph of y equals f inverse, that's the reflection of y equals f, like this. So if this vertical line on the left describes y equals f of x, this mirrored line that we've labeled g is actually also 
can be labeled as y equals f inverse of x. Okay. All right, so let's talk about an example here. f of x equals x squared. Is it invertible? In other words, what we're really asking here, we're asking, is the inverse, so we'll say f inverse, a function? So given what I told you, let's open up Desmos here, which I neglected to do. I'm sorry about that. Oh, and there's my email. Actually, it's my calendar. Oh, uh, let's do let's do this. And let me maximize this. And I'm going to do a couple of things here. I'm going to go ahead and put on here the function y equals x squared. And now here's one way to get to the inverse of this. We know that the point 2, 4 is on our graph, is on f. We know that the point negative 2, 4 is on f. Uh, we know 1, 1 and negative 1, 1. Whoops. Those are all points on f, right? Make them red so that they look like they're actually on f. There we go. Now, let's, so one way to find the inverse of functions is to just swap out x and y. So you see what I did? I just put y where x is and x where y is. That green curve represents the inverse of x. So let's check that. I told you that a point on the function would have its x's and y's swapped. So for example, the point 2, 4 on my function f, that should correspond to a point 4, 2 on the inverse. And the point negative 2, 4 on my function f should correspond to a point 4, negative 2 on the inverse. The point 1, 1 is a palindrome. It's the same forwards and backwards. But the point negative 1, 1 from my function f should correspond to a point 1, negative 1. And sure enough, so what I have there, Desmos makes it really easy to look at the inverses of functions because all you have to do to look at the inverse is to put x where y was and y where x was. And what do we see? Well, we see that we get a sideways parabola and that's what we got. So if I put in the line y equals x, we can see that these two curves are mirrored across this line. Okay. But is the inverse a function? Is this green curve a function? Oh, it fails the vertical line test, right? Yeah. So, the answer is no, f of x squared is not invertible 
because the inverse is not a function. Here's the thing. There's a thing called the horizontal line test. And if you think about what happens when we mirror a graph across the line y equals x, it'll make sense. So a function passes the horizontal line test if a horizontal line only hits it once. If a function passes a horizontal line test, then its inverse will be a function. So every mathematical function will have an inverse relation. But those relations, those inverse relations, may not be functions. Okay. Whoops. So functions whose inverses are functions are said to be one-to-one. -one. What that means is that they pass both the vertical line test and the horizontal line test. For every x, there is exactly one y. And for every y, there is exactly one x. OK. We said that already. So if f is a function that is invertible, then f is 1 to 1, and the graph of f will pass the horizontal line test. Let's look at some examples. For, so let's look at the function f of x equals 1 minus 2x over 5. There's another way. So let's think about this. So this is analytically using the definition. I'm going to show you how we do that. We write f of x, we say y equals 1 minus 2x over 5. This is my function f of x. Okay? Now, in order to determine if it is a one-to-one -one function, we are going to swap x's and y's. So we're going to say x equals 1 minus 2y over 5. This is an expression of f inverse of x. Now here's the test. If I can solve this equation for y without having to use a plus or a minus sign, like I would if it were a positive root, then this will be an invertible function. So can I solve this? Sure. Multiply through by 5, we get 5x equals 1 minus 2y. Subtract 1. We get 5x minus 1 equals negative 2y. Divide through by negative 2. We get y equals negative 5 halves x minus 1 half. We were able to solve this equation for y. This equation right here actually is the inverse function. And we know that this is indeed a function. So, yeah, this f of x equals 1 minus 2x over 5. That's invertible. Let's take a look at the graph. So, y equals 1 minus, whoops, sorry, 1 minus. 2x divided by 5. There's my straight line. Obviously, those points are not going to be on that, so we're just going to turn those off. I'll turn this off. But let's check what I think the inverse is, which was, what was it? Well, one way to check it on Desmos would be just to put in x equals 1 minus 2y over 5, but that's kind of cheating because I want to verify my work. So negative 5 halves x minus 1 half. So y equals 
negative five halves x minus one half. Hmm? How about plus one half? Yes, but let's check that with some points. Okay, so let's edit this line. So putting into my f of x, if I put in 1 half, I get out Zero. I'm going to cheat now. No, I won't. Oops, I got to turn those on before they show up. If I put in a zero, I get out one fifth. All right. If I put in an x value of one, I get out negative one fifth. Okay. So there are three points on my line. My f of x function. I know they're ugly points, but because I'm working with Desmos, I can get away with that. So let's just take those same points and swap the X's and the Y's and see if we get points on my inverse function. So the 1 half 0 should correspond to 0, 1 half. And let me turn this line on. And sure enough, there it is. The one, the zero one fifth should correspond to one fifth zero. And yep, there it is. Let's check the last one. Let's see if we've got a negative one fifth one. And yes, we do. So yeah, we did find the inverse function. Okay, let me erase my, let's see if I can do this. All right, erase my pen. The easiest way to erase it is to do that. There we go. And I don't want to use red anymore. I want to use blue. Okay, so let's try something a little more complicated. Let's try g of x. equals 2x over 1 minus x. Now before we start, let's go ahead and just look at the graph. And I'm going to turn this and this and this off for a minute. Turn those off. And y, uh, let's see, y is going to equal 2x over 1 minus x. 2x over 1 minus x. Whoops. There we go. All right, does this pass the horizontal line test? Well, let's see. Let's see. We make a horizontal line by saying y equals a. Okay, y equals 1. And if I move that up and down, yeah, look at there. It only hits the red line once in any spot. So my function passes the horizontal line test. So I should be able to find a function that is the inverse of this, g. So g inverse of x, how do I find that? Well, I find that by writing g of x as y equals 2x over 
1 minus x. Now to find my g inverse, I put my x's where y's are and y's where x's are. And now I solve this for y. So let's solve by multiplying through by 1 minus y. Distribute on the left. Move the xy term over to the right. On the right, we're going to factor out the y. And divide through by the 2 plus x. This is my inverse function. Let's check it real quick. Whoops. Helps if I put in the right function. There we go. Let's turn on my mirror. Yeah, so let's just check a few points here. Uh, we'll turn these on and we'll move them around. So if I put in x equals zero, I get out zero. Yep. If I put in x equals two, I'm going to get out four. No, I'm not. Negative four. Yeah, okay. Um, if I put in I can't put in one, so there's, so I cannot put x equals one into my function. So if we think about the relationship between the domain and the range of the function, because x has become y's, y's become x's, that means there's no way I can get one out of the inverse. So we'll talk about that a little more in a minute. But let's put in negative one. That's going to be negative two over 2, so that should be negative 1. Let's see if I did that right. Oops. Yes, I did. Okay. So I've got three points there. If I did my inverse correctly, I should be able to swap my x's and y's in those three points and get points on my inverse. So 0, 0 is palindrome. It looks like 0, 0. Yep, even if I swap them. Uh, let's try. So 2, negative 4 on my original function could, should correspond to negative 4, 2 on my inverse, and yes, it does. And then we've got another palindrome. We've got negative 1, negative 1. And yes, it also lies on the correct point. OK, we could try, let's see, if you wanted to, you could keep testing points, but you see that this worked. So now you know how to find function or inverses. Um, let's do one more that we know is probably not going to be invertible. So let's look at this h of x equals x squared minus 2x minus 4. So y equals x squared minus 2x minus 4. That's a parabola. We expected it to be parabola. We know this fails the vertical, the horizontal line test, so we know that its inverse is not going to be a function. Now we can still find a relationship that will represent the inverse of this. 
maybe. Sometimes analytically we can't. Graphically we can't, especially using something like Desmos because we can just type x equals y squared minus 2y minus 4. And that would be our inverse relation, the green one. It is still an inverse, but it's not a function. And here's why. Well, here's how we know. So let's take my h of x, and let's just try to find its inverse. So h of x equals x squared minus 2x. Whoops, that should be plus 4 on my graph. Sorry. Plus. Which means this guy is going to move to. There we go. Okay. So let's say we, we think we're going to try to find an inverse. So we'll write this as y equals x squared minus 2x plus 4. And now we're going to try to solve this for, now we're going to swap our x's and y's. So we're going to try to find h inverse. So let's plug, swap x for y. And right away we see we've got a problem, right? I mean, we could set this thing equal to zero and solve it, but that would only give us the y-intercepts. It's not going to give us a way to actually isolate y. It's mathematically very difficult. I can show you how to do it, and here's how we're going to do it. We're going to complete the square on this guy. So let's isolate the y's, subtract 4 from both sides. But anytime you have to go to some lengths, like trying to isolate the square, or sorry, complete the square. Um, you know that you're going to have to end up using a plus or a minus. So when I complete the square on this, I'm actually going to add one here, and which means I have to add one over here. So I end up with x minus 3 equals y minus 1 squared. Now here's the kicker. How do I undo a square? That means that y minus 1 equals the positive and negative square root of x minus 3. Or y equals 1 plus or minus the square root of x minus 3. What this means is that for every x that I plug in here, I get out two y's. This is not a function. This guy is not invertible. These other two were. Okay, so I've shown you a couple of things here. I've shown you how to find inverse functions. Swap x and y and solve for x, solve for y. And I've shown you how to test whether or not a function is invertible. And here we have the graphs. Okay, so here are the steps for finding the inverse of a one-to-one -one function. You, and this is what I've been doing. You write the function as y equals f of x. So you would write out, for example, y equals 3x minus 2. Interchange x's and y's. So here you would write x equals 3y minus 2. And I just made up this function. Don't think that you missed something. I just pulled it out of thin air. Okay. Um, and now you solve this for y. So if we solve this for y, we're going to get y equals x plus 2 all over 3. Three steps, not even hard ones. All right. Okay. So... Here's a couple of examples you can work. We've already done this, so I'm not going to use video time to do that. Um, I think this is getting long enough as it is. So I will leave these to you. You can check the, you go ahead and find the inverses of these. Check your work using decimals or look right here. Um, although this doesn't give you the equations, but if you have any questions, bring them to our next gathering. 
And now I mentioned this briefly in passing. I didn't mention this briefly in passing, but here's the thing. The domain of f, so for our function f, the domain becomes the range for f inverse. The range of x becomes the domain. So we can make this function, this non-invertible function f equals x squared invertible if we say all right look i only care about the positive ones so i'm going to throw out the negative ones once i restrict my domain like this that means that this now is an invertible function because this is now one to one it passes the horizontal line test mm -hmm. and we could solve it for y by only taking we could solve the inverse for y by only taking the positive root because we only care about the positive values. So we can utilize domain restrictions to make non-invertible functions invertible. Okay. I'm going to leave these to you. Here are the solutions. And we will work through this together when we gather. So Become familiar with this example. Remind me, this is what I want to do. We're going to work with the Portavoy game system again. And that's enough for today. So I will see you all soon. Have a great day and do good math.